Now, let me tell you about a story that involved young people and active citizens. It's a story about a little fish and a big dam. Now, in Tennessee, during the 1970s, the Tennessee Valley Authority, the TVA, began to build a big dam on a river. The dam was called the Teleco, and it was going to provide electricity to the whole region and create a big lake that everyone could enjoy. When the dam was almost completed, a scientist discovered that there was an endangered fish habitat there in the site of the dam, and that if the dam were completed, the fish would become extinct. Now, this little fish was called the snail darter, and it's not the most popular fish. Nobody tries to catch it. You don't know about a snail darter, do you? Nobody did. And it's not particularly good looking. It's about three and a half inches long. As far as I know, most people have ignored the snail darter forever. Uh, but uh, the people who discovered the danger to the snail darter, darter thought the construction of the dam ought to be stopped. Well, the people building the dam didn't agree with that. They thought it was more important to complete the construction of the dam, so it went on. Now, a group of students, not much older than you, decided to go to court about this problem. And they did. They wanted to save the snail darter. Now, they couldn't just go to court and try to make the um, court feel sorry for the fish. They had to show that the snail darter deserved to be protected under existing law. So what would that argument be? Well, the founding fathers didn't think fish had constitutional rights, did they? They're not mentioned. So they couldn't argue that the dam was unconstitutional. <clears throat> but the law includes laws passed by Congress. And Congress had passed a law called the Endangered Species Act. And that act protects plants and animals that are in danger of becoming extinct. And the law students thought that that law meant construction of the dam had to be halted. So um, when people disagree about the meaning of the law or how it ought to be applied, what do we do in the United States? We go to court if we have to, right? And we let the court decide. What is the law that applies and what does it mean? And does that law mean that the snail darters protected and construction of the dam has to be stopped? Well, there, the case was called Tennessee Valley Authority versus Hill. And that case went all the way through the courts to the United States Supreme Court, believe it or not. And in deciding the case, at the end of the day, the U.S. Supreme Court was guided by the rule of law. And the rule of law means that the law has to apply fairly and evenly to every citizen, regardless of political pressure, popularity, or individual preference. And the justices didn't look to whether the snail darter was a popular fish or whether they thought the dam was a really good idea. They looked only to what the law said, that Endangered Species Act law. They had to read the law, see what it said, and how it applied. And after careful consideration, the Supreme Court ruled that the Endangered Species Act required the dam construction to stop. How about that? Well, since the Supreme Court was interpreting a law that had been passed by Congress, Congress was free to change the law. They wrote it in the first place. They could change it. So the debate moved from the courts where it had been to Congress. And um, there was a Senator Howard Baker who was one of the leaders in the Senate at that time and he's from Tennessee. And he wanted that dam to continue. And he spoke with great passion to his fellow senators about the need for the dam to go ahead and be built. 
and he referred to the snail darter as the bane of his existence and the nemesis of his golden years. In the end, Senator Baker convinced enough of his fellow senators about the need for the dam that the Senate and later the House of Representatives voted to make an exception to the Danger Endangered Species Act for the Teleco Dam and uh, despite the problems for the snail darter. And that's what happened. The president at the time was Jimmy Carter and he signed the bill into law and the dam was completed. Now luckily for the snail darter, that isn't quite the end of the story because thanks to the work of the students, the Tennessee Valley Authority agreed to move a lot of the fish, the snail darters, to a nearby river where the fish are doing very well today. So that's a good story. Now if the supporters of the snail darter didn't understand how our courts or laws worked, they wouldn't have been able to take a case all the way to the Supreme Court, would they? And if the dam builders didn't understand the powers of the different branches of government to correct problems, uh, they couldn't have convinced Congress to change the law. So I think our system of government worked fairly well in that case. And uh, the intended functions of our government and our structure of government with its three branches, each with some power over the other two, can only survive if all of our citizens understand how things work and what our system of government is. And one of the best ways to understand how something works is to use it. Everybody can be a voter, an organizer, and an advocate, or a trial juror, and I encourage you to be all of those things.